How do you do? People who do not know the real purpose of life will latch on to almost anything as a substitute, some worthwhile, some not, some short-term, some that last a lifetime. The list is as varied as man's imagination. But the man in this story discovered that the soul is restless and dissatisfied until the real purpose is found, and the heart and mind and life are unshackled. This is Unshackled, the longest running radio drama ever broadcast. True life stories of real people, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Not many people would walk through a pitch dark room without turning on some kind of light. Too much danger of falling or hitting obstacles and hurting yourself. And yet people walk through life in darkness and end up casualties. Some of them come to Pacific Garden Mission homeless, hungry, and in despair. The mission doors have been open since 1877 as a refuge for people in darkness. And that's why it's called the Old Lighthouse, here to rescue the perishing. Food, clothing, and a bunk for the night, medical and dental care, classes and counseling, all kinds of help are given free to street people. But the greatest gift of all comes from the one who is the light of the world, and he offers new life. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 2,539 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Can you help me set the table, Kevin? Oh, you know I have football practice, Mom. Well, you'd better get into your uniform then. I'm gonna do it right now. Your dad should be home soon. He can run you over to the field. Hello? Yes, it is. What? Oh, no! We'll be right there. Kevin, get out here. Your father was in an accident. We've got to get to the hospital now. Lenny, come on! When we got to the hospital, we learned that he had hit another car while having a massive heart attack. A nurse passing by the accident scene tried to help him, but he died on the way to the hospital. There was nothing we could do. The death of a parent is always a blow, whether expected or unexpected. The man in our story was 13 years old when his father suddenly died, throwing his world into disarray because he didn't understand the purpose of life. This is the story of what he discovered that changed everything. The true story of Kevin Barino, right now on Unshackled. Ours was a typical middle-class American family living in Rochester, New York, when Dad died in 1978. He was a school vice principal, and Mom was a teacher in the same district. I was the youngest of three sons and felt as if I were up against reality for the first time in my life. Everyone said he was in a better place, so at first I prayed a lot. At least I tried. But life was never the same. Where's Mom, Lenny? Still in bed. This time of day? She's not getting any better. Oh, what about supper? Make yourself a sandwich. That's what I'm doing. I don't think she's ever going to get over Dad's death. I called Grandma, and she thinks Mom should get help. What do you mean? She and Grandpa want to put Mom in the hospital for depression. Oh, man. You have to admit it. She's not herself. She hardly ever eats. She stays in bed all the time. What'll happen to us if she goes in the hospital? Grandma and Grandpa will take care of us. That was a sad and lonely time in my life. I missed my dad and the fun times we had sharing fishing in our boat and hiking in the woods. But now Mom was gone too. Emotionally, at first, lost in her grief. And then physically, as she was hospitalized repeatedly for severe depression. Grandma and Grandpa looked after us, but I began to deteriorate. Hey, Kevin, wait up. Hey, you want to stop by my house on the way home? Sure. I got some new albums you have to hear. 
Black Sabbath and ACDC. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We can get high and jam on the music. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of new ones, too. We ought to form a band, you know that? We could be rock stars, too. Yeah. Those guys know how to live. They don't take nothing from nobody. Wouldn't that be cool to travel and live as you please? We could practice in my garage. I'll stop by the house and get my guitar. So my neighborhood buddies and I formed a band and learned to play some of our favorite songs, but we never got beyond the garage or playing in each other's homes. Smoking pot, playing guitar, going to rock concert. Well, that was my life, or more accurately, my escape from life. I couldn't see that the negative lyrics were encouraging my rebelliousness and aggressiveness towards others. I had a purpose in life such as it was to be a rock star. One night I got extremely drunk with some kids in the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, watch out for the ice, Kevin! <laughs> hey, are you practicing for the Olympics? Well, I'm glad you like it. Oh, I'm so drunk, I don't feel a thing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, that, that's a cop car coming. Oh, uh, so what? We're not breaking any law. <laughs> what are you kids up to, huh? Oh, uh, we're not doing anything. Yeah, we've had some complaints. Get in the patrol car. Oh, man. Show me your ID. All of yous. Oh, man, what is this, Russia? You're drunk and you're underage. Where'd yeah. you get the booze? Here's my ID. Junior high? You're in junior high? Yes, oh, sir. Crying out. Where do you live? Oh, right down the street and right around the corner. <laughs> oh, I love it, Peter. Go, go on home. Get. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What a jerk. Is he still watching? <laughs> yeah, he's still sitting there. <laughs> you guys, come on inside. Nobody's home. Come on, guys, let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Just get it over. All right, I'm trying. Hold on. We'll just continue to party in here. Hey, anybody want a drink? I know where Kevin keeps it. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, come on, I'll show you my music setup. <laughs> oh, man. I just got these cool new speakers. Right. Kevin, what is going on here? Oh, oh, what are you doing, home? I, I thought you were in college. Answer me! What, what are those kids doing in our liquor cabinet, huh? We, well, we just came in to get warm. Well, they can just leave right now. Oh, Go on, you guys. Get, get out of here. Get, get out and, and put down that bottle, huh? Put it, put it. Hey, hey, these are my friends. You got no right. Shut up. You're drunk, aren't you? Where'd you get off pulling a stunt like that? Just because Mom is sick and I'm off at college? Straighten up or else. I didn't straighten up because I saw no reason to change. Marijuana had clouded my thinking. My dream of being a rock star continued through my high school years, but remained just a dream. Slowly but surely, I was going nowhere. Even as a senior in high school, I had no positive goals. I skipped so many classes, there was no hope of graduating. Hey, Kevin, what are you up to, man? Uh, nothing much. I'm kind of bummed out. Oh. About what? Hmm, life, I guess. Hey, I looked for you at school, but you cut again, huh? Yeah, yeah, I was going to practice with Joey, but I didn't even do that. Oh, man. Wow, you're really stoned. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Bernard called me this morning, tried to talk me into coming to class, but I, I don't know, I just didn't feel like, feel he, like doing it. He called you at home? Well, what'd he say? Yeah, the usual, said I'm so close to graduating, I ought to make the effort, but I don't care if I do or not. Like, what's the difference? Well, what are you gonna do if you don't graduate? What else? Get a job, gotta earn a living. Sure enough, I fell short of the credits I needed to graduate, so I went to work at a couple of part-time jobs making minimum wage. Life had become as flat as a cardboard. I worked for a year, then had an idea. I would join the Army. 
The army? Why would you do that? Because I'm going nowhere here. No skills, minimum wage, it's nowhere. Oh, Kevin, don't join the army, though. I already did, Mom, this afternoon. You didn't even discuss it with me. I didn't want to be talked out of it, the way you're trying to now. I didn't know anybody joined the army these days. Why not? I get a steady income for the next four years, I get medical benefits, and I can learn some skills at the same time. I even get my high school diploma. Oh, man, you sound like a recruiter. I'm doing the right thing. I leave in a couple of weeks. I'll never see you again. That's not true, Mom. I get to come home now and then. You'll end up far away. I just know it. Mom, this is something I have to do if I'm ever going to get my life on the right track. I had a new purpose, and I really believed that success in the Army would somehow translate into success at life. On one level, that was true. But at a deeper level, I had missed the point. My first night of basic training, I was sure I had made a mistake. Barino, you failed to lock your locker last night. You think your mother's gonna come here and look after you? No, sir! You're here to learn responsibility, Barino. Did you hear the order to lock your belongings up at night? Yes, sir! Then why didn't you do it? I forgot, sir. And just to make sure you don't forget again, you'll carry all your belongings in your duffel bag, on your back, everywhere you go for the next two weeks. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Talk about humiliation. The boy who once dreamed of being a rock star who wouldn't take anything from anybody was being ordered around like a slave. I knew I had made a mistake as I marched everywhere with that duffel bag on my back. But I marched with a new purpose in my heart. We'll hear more about that in just a moment. Did you know that a few of these unshackled dramas have been turned into comic books? Everyone seems to like pictures, especially pictures that tell a story. And our Donna Disser comic book faithfully retells the story of her life just as it was originally broadcast, illustrated by Florida artist Bill Waters. And we'd like to send you this comic book free for the asking, and we hope you'll pass it along to someone who needs to hear about God's grace and love, his power that can transform any life. Like many teenagers, Donna was deceived by alcohol and drugs, and each drawing brings to life the lessons to be learned and avoided. You probably know someone who would be encouraged by her story, a neighbor, a friend, maybe someone in your family. Read it and share with others. Donna's story concludes with scripture verses and a sample prayer that anyone can read and follow to salvation. It's an effective way to evangelize and sow seeds of repentance. So write and ask for your free copy of the Donna Disser comic book today. The address, Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. And please include your address. I was determined to survive basic training. The hard work, the humiliation, even the ban on smoking for the first two months. And I survived. Because of drug testing, I gave up pot altogether, so things were looking up for me. I was proud of getting my high school diploma, and my mother and brother came to graduation ceremonies. Congratulations, Kevin. I'm glad you made it. Oh, me too. Where's Mom? Uh, she's coming. She had to put more film on the camera. How's she doing? Much better. She's really proud of you for getting your diploma. I'm pretty happy myself. We'll have to go out and celebrate. I'm so glad you came. It means so much to me. We're proud of you, Kevin, and we wanted you to know it. Where do you go from here? Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I'm classified as a plumber, but I hope to learn other skills too. Mostly construction, I think. You plan to stay in, Kevin? <laughs> Marching isn't that much fun. <laughs> uh, here comes Mom. You two stand together and I'll take your picture. I spent the next two and a half years at Fort Bragg learning carpentry and remodeling. I worked hard on the job, but slowly I also returned to my old ways only more so. Substituting alcohol for pot 
Parties became a way of life. Every weekend I got drunk. When I had only 18 months to go, I was transferred to Korea. Oh, man, I hate this place. You hate it? I've been stuck here a year already. And I have to face another birthday, another Christmas, and another New Year's here. Uh, that's the way it is, Kevin. The Army's not about to send you to a new post for only six months. <laughs> I know. But Korea's supposed to be a one-year assignment. It ain't fair. Whoever said the Army was fair? <laughs> uh, that guy's still complaining about his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. She's out with some other guy. <laughs> He's gonna start a fight about it. You wait and see. So what? It helps pass the time. It's stupid. That's what. You want to fight about it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. I, I wish he'd shut up. Hey, hey, dude. What do you expect? You're in love with a slut. <laughs> <laughs> It was just like the Wild West over there. Drunken fights all the time in the village bars. I didn't want to get a dishonorable discharge with only two months left in the army, so I stopped going off post. Mellowed out, and went home with an honorable discharge after four years of service. There I found a job right away in construction and went back to smoking pot. About six months later, friends invited me on a trip to Niagara Falls. That's how I met Michelle. Beautiful, isn't it? Awesome. Seeing things like this always makes me wonder how anyone could not believe in God. To tell you the truth, I haven't thought much about God since my dad died. That must have been hard. Yeah, it was hard. It kind of forced me to take care of myself. <laughs> Did you do a good job? Made some mistakes, but I'm still here. Maybe somebody's watching over you. Yeah, me. <laughs> You're funny, Kevin. If you don't watch out for yourself, nobody else will. You don't think God cares? I haven't seen any evidence of that so far. Michelle and I began to date the usual way. Movies, dinner, dancing at clubs. Sometimes we took walks and just talked. The first time I met her father, he said, Hi, handed me a King James Bible and another book about the rapture and told me to read it. I thought that was pretty weird. What do you do that for? What? Give me those books. Oh, that's just Dad. He loves to read the Bible, and he thought you'd enjoy reading it, too. I think he's trying to tell me something. <laughs> What's that other book? Oh, about the rapture? That's about Jesus coming back to take believers with him to heaven. Weird. Where would you like to go tonight? I know. Let's go to that club we went to last week. <laughs> Kevin, I hope you weren't put off by my father. He's a great guy, really. Yeah, I'm sure he meant well. He has so much wisdom, and he sure knows the Bible. How to get to heaven, how to live on earth. That's nice. Do you know how to get to heaven? Yeah, live a good life, which leaves me out. No, that's not it at all. You have to believe in Jesus, that he died in your place. Wait a minute. How can you know so much about it? What do you mean? You're no different from me. Look at the way you live. That's not the point. Then what is? I think we'd better talk about something else. I put the books he gave me on the shelf where they gathered dust and carried on as before. Michelle and I had been dating for about a year when she began to change. Summer is almost over. I hate to see it end. Me too. Let's go for a hike in the woods tomorrow. Um, I think I want to go to church in the morning. Church? Yes, Kevin. I know my dad isn't happy with the way I'm living. And I'd like to make him happy, so I thought I'd start going to church again. I haven't been to church in years. Um, do you mind if I go with you? Not at all! That would really make dad happy, Kevin. We started to go to church every Sunday, and I can honestly say I don't remember what I heard. And yet I began to realize my life wasn't right before God. I felt very unclean. I began reading the Bible Michelle's father had given me, and every week after church when he took us out to lunch, 
he answered my questions. I'm glad to hear you're reading the Bible, Kevin. I'm reading both Genesis and Matthew the way you suggested. Good. Did you like the sermon today? Yes. Uh, do you really think God has a plan for every person's life? Well, that's what the Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. An expected end. Do you expect to go to heaven? Not the way I live. Well, God has other plans. He wants you to go to heaven. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. That's why he sent Jesus to die in our place. And the plan for each life is? To be reconciled to God through the blood of Christ. And after that, to glorify God with your life that others may see and believe. One Sunday, the preacher said, if you were to die right now, do you know where you would spend eternity? If you're not sure, raise your hand so I can pray for you. I wanted to raise my hand, but didn't. That day, I read two tracts that I had been given earlier that explained the gospel through illustrations. I read them and prayed, my heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for all my sins. I know I can't save myself, but I know you can save me. Please save me and come into me and sit on the throne of my life and become my Lord. I turn the reins of my life into your hands, Lord, from this day forward. I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. The next Sunday at church, Michelle knew that something had changed. Something's different about you, Kevin. I finally understood about salvation. You did? How? I, I was reading this track, see? It has a picture of a throne with a person sitting on it. And I saw at once that I was on the throne of my life when the Lord should be sitting there. That's an interesting track. I read it and knew that I was lost and needed Jesus. I saw you raise your hand in church, and I knew something had changed. I know where I'll spend eternity now, with the Lord. Michelle, you've got to do it too. <laughs> Dad will be really glad to hear this. This is a good track. The message is very clear. I follow the steps on the back page. I kneeled down and looked up each verse for each step. Good for you. The first one was Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. I always knew I was a sinner. The hard part is admitting it, and even harder, repenting, which is the next step. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 5. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God made the last step so easy for us, didn't he? Uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say it all that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm really glad you gave me that Bible. I should have read it sooner. Uh, God's timing is perfect, Kevin. I have some other books that'll help you grow in your new life. Now you're a new creation in Christ. I came to Christ on March 28, 1990, and found the real purpose of life, to follow Christ and be a light in the darkness for others to see God's mercy and truth. Michelle came to Christ on June 13, 1990. Our lives changed a lot. You really got rid of your whole record collection? 120 rock albums. They led me astray for a lot of years, Michelle, so I put them where they belonged, in the trash. <laughs> You're right. Kevin, your faith in Christ made me think about my life. My dad exposed me to God's word, but God used you to challenge me. There are so many temptations. Nothing is as bad as living without Jesus in our lives. Yeah, that's true. Let's study the Bible together so that the Lord will always guide us in whatever we do. Yeah, we'll help each other stay on course.
Michelle and I were married September 7, 1990, and God has given us three children. I'm currently serving in the street ministry at our church while attending full-time at a Bible institute. There is no greater purpose in life and no greater joy than to know the Lord and follow Him. We hope Kevin's story has deepened your understanding of God's purpose for your life. Colossians chapter 1 explains very clearly. Listen to verses 13 and 14. God hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Listening friend, if you would like to have peace with God, pray with us right now. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, and I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins, and that his blood alone will cleanse me. I believe he rose from the dead, and that he lives in every believer, giving eternal life. Thank you for your incredible gift of salvation. Help me to follow Jesus and choose your ways from now on. If you prayed with us, then find a church that teaches the Bible and fellowship with other believers, and you will grow in knowledge and in faith. Write and tell us about your decision. The address is simply Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. The telephone number in Chicago, area 312-922-1462. Visit our website at www.unshackled.org. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. This is program number 2,539, heard in the true story of Kevin Barino, where Mike Baccarella, Kate Burns, Roman Serwinski, Peter Zinn, and P.J. Burns. Original music, Ralph Colburn. Sound, Nicoloisio, Engineer Ed Webb. Script by Kenetha Gabler. And I'm Bob O'Donnell. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. We'd like to know that you appreciate these testimonies, so please write soon. That's Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. Discouraged? Call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-922-1462. Someone is waiting for your call. 312 922 one four six two.